Hey guys, welcome into today's video. Today I want to do a wrap up of all of the best releases of 2022. I am going to do a video of the worst makeup that I tried that released in 2022 with some of the, mm, like they're okay products of 2022. So I try to narrow everything down and I have to tell you, I am looking around and I am fully embarrassed at all the stuff that I pulled out that I purchased. So I kept it to those things that released this year. Some of these probably released at the very end of last year, but I'll try and mention that as I go through. Yeah, I'm like shocked and embarrassed at all the stuff that released that I tried this year. Oh. Well, I will do my best to keep it short and sweet. These are really the items that I loved. Like all of these I really love. They're going to stay. I'm going to do, like I said, another video of the stuff that's maybe not my favorite, but it's not leaving my collection. And then the stuff that I'm absolutely decluttering because I just didn't like it. So I did break up some collections. Some of these releases came with other items in them, but they're going to move into the other video. So if you're interested in seeing that, stick around. I hope you hit the subscribe button. Now let's just jump right into it. I do a cutaway of all of the items as I applied them to my face. I am wearing as many of them as I could get on, so you will see cutaways of that, and I am gonna do my best to go in the order in which I applied them to my face. Okay, starting with primers. I have one, and this is not necessarily a primer, but it's something that I use as a glowy base. This is the Say Star Glow Glowy Super Gel. I wear this under my foundation as a glowy primer. I don't like liquid highlighters very much, but I love this. I fell in love with this product throughout the year. I thought it was really good lightweight formula and it really made a difference underneath my foundation. There are some products that give me a really good glow but if I put kind of a medium coverage foundation on I can't really tell. This is one that I think does show even with the foundation on. This one is just the mini. It does come in a larger size. I have definitely been loving this and I have other products like this in my collection that give the glow under your foundation or that I just wear as kind of a primer but I love this one the best. This one was my favorite so I thought this was a really good release from say this year. I do have one lip mask or lip treatment. This is the Tony Molly Candy Cane Jelly Lip Melt. This was released for holiday and I think that it came in two different like shades or scents or flavors, whatever they're calling them. And at first I wasn't sure about this product. I haven't tried anything else from Tony Molly and I thought it was kind of like a, a stiff jello texture, but I love the way that it feels. I wouldn't say that this is something that I carry in my purse and like to really just apply with my finger when I'm on the go, but I think it is very hydrating. It is though like more of a melt. It's not really something that you would wear at nighttime. It's just not as thick of a consistency, but it's good for hydration and a tiny bit of color. So that one was a good one for a holiday release for this year. Let's move on into foundations. I have quite a few foundations. So the first one that I have is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. I waited about a month and a half after this release and that seemed like it was going to be more medium weight coverage was going to work for me, but it works so well. It is a satin finish foundation but it's not too heavy, it's not too cakey, and it doesn't break apart on my face. Mine is in the shade 105W. This also does come with SPF 27, which I absolutely love. Again, was not sure about this foundation, thought it was going to be too heavy on me, but it's not. It's, it's beautiful. I wouldn't say the Care and Glow does anything. Like, I don't see any radiance or luminosity to it. It's a satin finish, but it's still absolutely beautiful, and I've been loving this one. This was my favorite satin matte foundation that really least this year, so I'm glad that I got this one. The next one that I have, I think, has been a hit or miss for some people. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I have mine in the shade Fair 2. I think this is a little bit of a lighter shade than I normally go for in my foundations, but I think it matches my skin tone very well. Like I said, I've heard mixed reviews on this. I think that some people didn't like the cream foundation portion of this product, but I absolutely love it. I think it works really well for my skin. I think that it's pretty lightweight. I think it's a medium color coverage and I really like the finishing powder. I pretty much like anything that doesn't break apart on my face, <laughs> start caking up around the center of my face or start fading off like, I don't know, an hour into wearing it. And this one doesn't do that. So whatever the reason that it doesn't work for other people, I don't experience that. I love it. I think the finishing powder is soft and lightweight. I have a lot of trouble with heavier powders. So I'm one of those people that is like, if that powder is the thinnest powder ever, it's going to work for me, but otherwise it's going to look cakey and terrible. And I liked this powder. I thought it was beautiful. 
The next foundation I have is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation, and I have mine in the shade 110 Light Neutral. This is another foundation that I think is a satin finish. I think it's a pretty lightweight formula. It has medium coverage. I would not say it's full coverage or light coverage. It's right in the middle. But again, it's one of those that sits really beautifully on my skin and has a good amount of lasting power and it doesn't break down. I don't think it's as satin matte as the Lancome. I think it's more of a satin finish, but I think it was beautiful. I think it was a really good hit for 2022 and it worked really well for me. The next foundation that I have is from NARS. It's the Light Reflecting Foundation and I have mine in the shade Duville. This one is a little bit more full coverage than I normally go for, but I think it's beautiful. I called this in one of my foundation like collection and declutter videos where this stayed, a foundation that was like date night vibes. It's just a little bit heavier. It's a little bit more glamorous. It's not something that I would reach for on an everyday basis, but it doesn't break apart on me and it doesn't look funny. I think this foundation is beautiful. Again, another one that was a great release for 2022. And I will add that a lot of NARS foundations don't work for me and I have decluttered them in the past. So I was really, really excited that this one did work for me. The next foundation that I have is from Oma Beauty. This is the Say What Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. And I have mine in the shade Fair Lady T3C. The name says Weightless Soft Matte Hydrating Foundation. I think the name is perfect. It's long, it seems to contradict itself, but I think that it's absolutely spot on. I think it is a soft matte and I do think it's hydrating. I was kind of thinking this was gonna end up being a little bit too heavy or too dry for me, but no, it's, it's perfect. It works really well for me. I think this is probably like number three or four of the foundations that I would rank for the ones that I tried for 2022. So this one was a really good one. So if you have a similar skin type and you haven't checked that out, I would definitely say that it's worth it. The next foundation or balm that I have is from Dr. Jart. This is the Premium Beauty Balm. This one has an SPF 40 and I have mine in the shade Fair Light. This technically did not get released in 2022. It was released maybe several years ago, but it was reformulated this year. I never tried the original. I only tried this version, the reformulation, and this is gorgeous. This is super luminous, super hydrating. I equate this to like what you'd want on your skin if you're going to the pool all day or if you're going to the beach all day. This is so beautiful and it doesn't slip off of my skin. I thought that I would put it on and because it's a little bit more hydrating, as I went out to the humidity, it would kind of slip off, but it didn't do that. It's also a long lasting formula. So I'm a huge, huge fan of this. The final foundation that I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, and I have mine in the shade three neutral. Again, this is another one that I've heard mixed reviews about. I have heard some people say that it's just drying. It just doesn't last on the skin. It doesn't look good. I love this. I have never tried another Charlotte Tilbury base product or foundation before. This was my first try. Again, this was something that I thought was gonna be a little bit of a heavy formula, but it's not. It gives just the right amount of radiance. It doesn't crease, it doesn't cake on me. It looks perfect, it, break, it breaks down nicely, but it fades evenly throughout the day. I'm just a huge, huge fan of this one. I think Charlotte did a really good job, and I also love the concealer, which is coming up very shortly. All right, so moving on into concealers, the first one that I have is from Milk Makeup. This is the Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer. This one is in the shade 7NW. This was another hot release from Milk. I have tried Milk's concealers in the past. Some of them I've liked, some of them I've been indifferent about, but I think this one was great. When I first tried this one, I actually found that it was like a little bit of a stiffer formula and when I tried working it in I thought oh no the dry down time is too quick and it's not gonna look very good. You give it a little bit of extra pressure this turns into a beautiful semi-radiant concealer that offers medium coverage and it never creases on me. That's all I look for. Give me medium coverage and don't crease and don't fade away in five minutes. Boom you have a winner. This one so so good. Loving this one. The next one that I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. I have my in the shade Four Fair. This one's similar to the Milk one. It's not as thick of a formula, and I can tell that it has a little bit more radiance to it. But the radiance is just right. Like, it's the perfect amount of radiance. It never looks too glowy. Again, it's a medium coverage. Maybe not as much as the Milk, but I still think it's a beautiful finish, and again, it doesn't crease on me. So this was another hot release 
for 2022. This next concealer I'm pretty sure released this year. If it did, it was like really early on in the year. This is the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer and I have mine in the shade LN6. This concealer claims to be full coverage, but that's not what I find with it. I think it's medium, but I think it's a really, really thin formula. I have another full coverage concealer coming up next. And if you see my cutaways, you'll see just how much thicker the consistency is than this one. This is just super lightweight. It's a medium coverage. Again, something that doesn't crease under my eyes. And LYS products tend to be a little bit less expensive than some of the other items that sell at Sephora. So I like this one and I think LYS does a pretty good job on most of their products. The next one that I have is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. This is a full coverage multi-use concealer and I have mine in the shade 15.5N. This one is one that a little bit goes a really, really long way. A little dot of this and the concealer will spread over half of your face. The Best Skin Ever Foundation is my favorite. It's my favorite foundation in my collection. This was an excellent release. This this is full coverage, but it doesn't crease on me. I just use one dot and that's really all I need. This was tremendous. I like to keep my full coverage concealers pretty pared down because I don't typically reach for them. So I have maybe three or four in my collection that are true full coverage because those ones aren't creasing. This one doesn't do that for me and I have super dry skin, so I'm loving this one. The next one, I'm not sure released in 2022, but I purchased it in the very beginning of 2022 and I feel like it released in 2021. So it might've been one of those that was right at the end of the year. I don't know, I really can't remember. If this is the Dior Flash Perfector Concealer and I have mine in the shade 1N. This is a lighter weight formula, but again, it's like a light to medium coverage. It never creases. It has a brush applicator, which is really unique and I absolutely love the Dior Backstage Foundation. Dior base products are usually really good for my dry skin. I usually never have any issues. I did try the Dior Forever Skin Glow and it's just kind of a heavier consistency for me, so it doesn't really work well, but all of their concealers, this one and the Dior Skin Correct Concealer both work really, really well. So I wanted to throw this one in here because I love this one. This is another one that I'm not sure released in 2022, but I'm pretty sure that it did. It's the concealer from RMS. It's called the Uncover Up and I have mine in the shade 00. This is another one of those where I keep my potted concealers really pared down to only the ones that I really, really like because potted concealers tend to be a little bit more of a sticky formula. They're usually more full coverage and they have a higher tendency to like crease on me. But this RMS one, is one of my favorite pot eye concealers that I've ever tried. I will be keeping this in my collection. It was a huge love for me in 2022. All right, let's move on into powders. I have four powders here. The first one that I have is another release from House Labs. This is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder and I have mine in the shade Translucent. I bought the foundation before I purchased the powder because I wanted to see good reviews on this powder before I purchased it because oftentimes I waste my money buying powders that seem to work for other people. But then when I saw someone review this that has like a similar similar skin type as me, very dry, maybe a little bit more mature, and it worked really well for them. I decided to pick this up. I'd say this powder is a little bit heavier or on the heavier side, but it still seems to be very airbrushing. It's not too heavy a powder. It doesn't look too cakey. I have really, really been enjoying this. Again, I think it's kind of a similar satin finish as the foundation. So have been loving a lot of the new House Labs releases. So you will see a couple of those in here. The next one that I have is a powder foundation from one size. This one is the Turn Up the Base Versatile Foundation Powder and I have mine in the shade Fair 3N. I did see good reviews on this powder before I purchased it and I'm somebody who will use a powder foundation to set all over my face. I do not like this powder on its own but this is a more lightweight powder than even the House Labs one so I like it even better. I've just been really loving using powder foundations to set all over my face lately so when they work and they're a lighter weight powder foundation it's a really big thumbs up for me. It's just going to be something that I reach for all the time, maybe even over a loose powder. And I thought this was a great formulation from one size. I didn't think the powder was too heavy. The next one that I have is also a powder foundation. This is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation, and I have mine in the shade Fair 150C. I didn't even know that this one launched when it did, but I think I saw this online at some point, and I was like, okay, let me give that a shot. I don't think I had heard anybody review this product, but this is another one just like the one size. I think it's super lightweight, and I think it's great for setting all over my face and I've been really enjoying this. 
I grab for this one right now over any of my other powders. The next one that I have is also a powder foundation. This one's from Essence. This is the 16 hour cover and last powder foundation and I have mine in the shade 01 porcelain. This one I don't like as much as the e.l.f. but I do like it. I think it's pretty lightweight for a powder foundation and again it's something that I use to set all over my face. Why I like to use these I think is because they have a little bit of a tack to them. Like they're a little bit more sticky. They're meant to last a little bit longer because they're a powder foundation and so they set my makeup down really well. So a lot of times I will wear this maybe over like a tackier foundation. Anyway, so this one was a good one again for me. Not my favorite of the powder foundations, but still really good. Okay, let's move on into bronzers. I'm gonna do my cream and liquid bronzers first. This is where it gets kind of embarrassing because there's just so many new ones that I tried and all of these released with the exception of maybe like one in 2022. The first one up that I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer. I have mine in the shade One Fair. I have come to find that I am absolutely in love with cream to powder formulas. That's exactly what this one is. And Charlotte Tilbury for undertones for me, it's always perfect. It's never too warm. Her contour is the same way. It's just perfect for my skin in the lightest shade that they carry. I thought this was a really, really good release. I know that cream bronzers and cream blushes were really popular for 2022, probably starting at the end of 2021. So I could see why Charlotte Tilbury wanted to jump on the wagon and create one of her own. But I thought this one was really unique. Again, it's that cream to powder formula. Not a lot of them are cream to powder formulations. I thought this one was tremendous. I think it looks really airbrushed on the cheeks. I like that it's not sticky because it is cream to powder. And I just think it's gorgeous. Like it looks airbrushed on the skin. It's just a really, really big fave of mine. I think all of these bronzers, with the exception of one, I really, really love. The next bronzer is one that might have been released in 2021. I can't exactly remember. And if it was, it was definitely near the end, but I didn't purchase it until 2022. This one is the NARS Laguna Bronzing Cream, and I have mine in the shade Laguna 01. I was so excited when this came out. The fact that they made a 01 and 02 in the cream bronzer excited me. The Laguna bronzer that's so popular in the powder is just a little bit too dark. I do have one in my collection, but I can't really wear it all the time. It's one that I have to kind of be careful of. Like when I apply it, I have to go into a light hand. So when they released this in like 01 and 02, I was like, finally, now we're gonna be able to use the Laguna bronzer for fair skin people. But this bronzer in and of itself, like in the tone is super neutral. And I think it has a tiny bit of warmth, but it's super creamy, very, very easy to apply. I love this bronze, probably top five cream bronzers that I have. The next one that I have is a release from Tarte. This is the Breezy Cream Bronzer and I have mine in the shade Seychelles. I feel like I recently looked this up and I feel like this is currently sold out on Sephora's website. This is a really emollient bronzer. It's very easy to apply just like the other two. What makes this one a little bit different is that it has one of the features that I absolutely love in a bronzer shade, which is it has a little bit of a red undertone. And I think that red undertone is really, really good for fair skin because I think that it doesn't look muddy, dirty, or too orange when it translates. I think that it looks more natural and sun-kissed with a red undertone on fair skin. So I love this bronzer because it has that and it's probably my only cream bronzer that has that much of a red undertone. So I love reaching for this. The next bronzer that I have is the Merit Stick Bronzer. It's called the Bronze Balm and I have mine in the shade Clay. This is another one that is a really, really neutral tone with a slight bit of warmth to it, but a lot less than a lot of my other bronzer. I don't find any issues blending this bronzer out. I think it's beautiful on the skin, pretty long lasting formula. So there's not much else I can say about it. I just like how emollient it is, how easy it is, and I like the tone of it. There's a lot of stick bronzers and that one probably ranks pretty high in terms of the stick bronzers that I've tried. The next may not actually be a bronzer. This one is by Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. He calls it an all over warming complexion tint and I have mine in the shade Light. This is the most natural cream bronzer that I have in my collection. It's super easy to blend out. It's not overly emollient, but it is pretty creamy. It's just like that it gives this very, very natural sun-kissed look without being over the top. And that's really why I like it. It's probably my most natural looking like cream bronzer that I have in my collection. So this is one of my favorite cream bronzers in my collection, not just that released in 2022. 
The next one that I have was released in 2022, but it is from the drugstore. This is the Oma by Sharon C, the more affordable line that is in CVS and Walmart. This is the Flawless IRL Bronzer in the shade Shady. This product was made in Italy. It is a cream to powder formula, and this is another one that has a really good tone to it. I just like the formulation on this so much. It performs like some of my high-end cream bronzers, and I think it retails for like $12. It's just a solid, solid cream bronzer in a really, really good shade. Like if you're balling on a budget, like this is the one to get. Like you could pass all these other ones that I just went over, and you could replace it with this because it's just that good. It's just a really solid, good product, good tone, can't let you down, drugstore cream bronzer. The next one was not released in 2022, but I believe the reformulation was. If I'm incorrect, I do apologize. It might have been last year. But this is the Chanel Cream Bronzer, the Le Beige, called the Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream, and I have mine in the shade 390 Soleil Tan Bronze. This is a pretty expensive product, but it does come with a lot of product in it. And I cannot say that this is better than some of my other more affordable products. But what I will say about this, it is a very good product. It has a really, really good tone to it. I know that some Chanel products, some fragrance, but this one has a really, really light, sweet smell to it. It's not overpowering. It's not overbearing. It's super emollient. It feels like a cream to powder finish. It makes my cheeks look airbrushed. So even though it's a higher price point, it's still a lovely, lovely product. And I'm really, really glad that I grabbed this reformulation. The last one that I have is a liquid contour. This is one from Milani. This is their Conceal and Perfect. I have mine in the shade 01 Honey. I do like this. I think that I like this for a bronzer that is the counterpart to the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I think that this one in this tone for my skin tone works beautifully. It's super easy to blend out and it doesn't dry down too quickly. It doesn't have too much warmth. I just think that it's a really, really good shade for fair skin and I have really, really been liking this product. I can't say that about its counterparts because this did launch with three different products in it, and you will see those if you check out my other videos, but I'm loving the liquid contour from Milani. Let's move on into the powder bronzers. So the first one that I have is from L'Oreal. This is the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Bronzer. It is a soft matte finish and it's supposed to be waterproof. I have mine in the shade 200 Fair. I think this is a really, really good drugstore powder bronzer. Super neutral tone, makes my cheeks look airbrushed. It's such a soft, soft formula. And for the drugstore, there's just a few that I probably have at this price point that look as airbrushed. I think L'Oreal did a really good job with this. I can see why it went pretty viral and it was pretty popular. It's just an all around really, really good powder bronzer for the tone and its consistency. So this one I took traveling with me because I liked it so much and I needed something that was gonna be like a one and done. Like I don't have to worry about it, put it on, we're good to go, it's not finicky. So took this one with me and I'm loving this one. The next one that I have, again, may not be considered a bronzer, but this is from Makeup by Mario. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Perfector. They call it the Radiant Skin Powder and I have mine in the shade Light. This again is not something that he probably intended to be released as a bronzer. It has kind of an ombre effect to it. So it comes with a lighter shade, more warm tone, and then a more neutral shade at the bottom. But this works perfectly if I swirl it together. It works very similarly to its cream counterpart and that it's just very light and very very natural in the skin it's the most natural looking bronzer that I have in my collection so I've been enjoying that one the next that I have is from make beauty this is the skin mimetic micro suede bronzer in the shade lunar I do like the formulation in this one it does have a little bit more warmth than some of my other more neutral bronzers and maybe a little bit more warmth than I like for an everyday look but I think the formulation is really good on this and there are a lot of make beauty products that I tried in 2022 for the first time that I've really been enjoying so my only complaint about this product is that they could have come with a bit of a lighter shade for being the lightest shade that they have. So I would like to see them expand their range. But again, Make Beauty is a brand that I have been quite enjoying this year. All right, let's move on into blushes. I do have one powder blush here, so I'll kind of jump around. But the first that I want to go over are the About Face Cheek Freak Blush Balm. I have two shades here. The more orangey one is in the shade Raunchy, and then the other one is called Quickie. I have heard kind of like hit and miss on these products, but I instantly fell in love with these. These are so, so good. They're so good that I started with one shade and then ended up picking up another. And while they're relatively similar, they do seem to translate 
quite differently on the cheeks. One is a very, very punchy orange while the other one has a bit of a pink base to it. These were great. Like these were super easy to apply. They were super emollient. They were really pigmented for me. They dried down pretty quickly. I had no issues. I love a blush that's long lasting and that's just really uncomplicated. And that was this for me. So I loved those. The next one that I have is a launch from Gucci. This is their Cheeks and Eyes Powder Luminous Matte Blush in the shade 05 Rosy Beige. I instantly fell in love with this. This is exactly what it says. It's a very luminous matte formula, but it doesn't look gray on the cheeks when you're facing forward. I think that it's beautiful consistency. I think it looks great on the cheeks. I think it's very sophisticated. It's a more buildable formula. Like it's not overly pigmented, but I absolutely love it. It's another one that like I took traveling with me. So the back is kind of beat up, but it was again, just something that I need that's super easy to pick up, easy to wear, lasts a while and won't let me down throughout the day. So that's a really, really good launch from Gucci. The next one that I have is a more affordable launch. This one is from Moira Beauty. This is the Love Heat Cream Blush in the shade 08, I Trust You. This is another really good cream blush, super emollient. It does stay a little bit stickier on the cheeks for a little bit longer than some of my other ones. But as far as cream blushes go and pigmentation and how long it lasts, it does a really good job. So this is a good affordable option for Moira Beauty. Moira is another brand that I tried for the first time in 2022. So if you are interested in a more affordable brand that has pretty good cream products, really good eyeshadows, then I would suggest checking out Moira Beauty. The next one that I have is a trio. This is the Cheek Clapper from One Size. It's called the 3D Blush Trio. This one is in the shade Very That. So the top one is a cream, the middle one is a matte powder, and then the bottom one is a luminous powder. I think this is a fantastic product. I think the cream one is super emollient and super pigmented. I like a blush that's really pigmented. So I think you do have to like something that's extra pigmented to really like this product, but that's just my personal preference. I thought the matte blush was perfect and pigmented, and I thought the shimmer was beautiful. I love the shade of this shimmer blush. It's not something I would wear by itself, but I think it's so beautiful you could even wear it as a highlighter or over top of your matte blush to give it a little bit of luminosity. I thought this was a tremendous release. I'm kind of obsessed with this product. I did not try any new brow products in 2022. So I wanna move on into face palettes. First one that I have is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette and I have mine in the shade Fair Medium. I think I heard mixed reviews on this palette, but I think it's beautiful. The mixed reviews that I had was it wasn't easy to pick up on a brush, so it didn't deposit a lot of pigmentation on the cheeks and I never found that. I've been using a fluffy brush to apply this. Every single time I put it on, it's super pigmented, it's super easy to apply, and I think these are beautiful shades. I equally like the highlighters that are in here. I think that they're luminous without having sparkle in them, without looking too glittery or juvenile on the cheeks. I think they look sophisticated and beautiful, so there wasn't anything about this cheek palette that I didn't like. I do think that it's pricier, but not in comparison to some of her other items, where where in this you actually get four different products and I like all shades that came in here. So this one was a hit for me. The next one I have is a recent release from NARS. This was a holiday release for 2022. So it just came out a couple of months ago. This is the Rising Star Cheek Palette. This is probably my favorite NARS product of all time. The colors in here, I feel like would complement every skin tone that you threw at it. I think they did a really good job curating this and giving it a lot of variety. You have an orangey blush, you have a more shimmery blush, you have a couple more pinky blushes, you have one that's more neutral and nude, and then one deeper tone for deeper skin tones. I think that NARS did a really, really good job. I loved this baked formula, and I didn't find any issue picking it up with a super fluffy brush and translating it to the cheeks. This is one when I swatch it on my hand, every single time one or two of the colors end up staining my hand because it's just so pigmented. Like I said, favorite NARS product in my entire collection right here. All right, let's move on into highlighters. I have two highlighters that are brand, brand new for 2022, and these are the Rare Beauty Soft Touch Powder Highlighters. I have two shades. The lighter one is in the shade Enlighten, and the more pinky one is in the shade Mesmerize. I instantly fell in love with these. I think that they are super punchy, and I like a super punchy highlighter. I think you can also mute them out and go in with a light hand if you want to. I don't think they overemphasize the texture on my cheeks. That's one of the things that I look for in a highlighter 
texture and a lot of times I do get a lot of texture on my cheeks that will show up but I don't notice that with this formulation. I think that it sits beautifully on the skin. I think it looks super sophisticated. I just I'm a huge huge fan of these. I'm so glad Selena released powder highlighters and I can't rave about these enough and I like that they're more affordable than some of the other highlighters that are in Sephora right now. The next powder highlighter that I have is from House Labs. This is the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter and I have mine in the shade Sunstone. This one does emphasize my texture a little bit more than some of my other ones, but I think it's a very wet looking highlighter and I think it remains a good amount of the day. I think that it sits beautifully on top of every single blush and I think it's just, I don't know, there's just something about it that looks makes it look sophisticated, that melts into my skin. I have been pretty excited with the House Labs releases this year and I, I thought this was a really good one. The final highlighter is a powder highlighter, but it wasn't necessarily released for formulation in 2022, but they did expand their shade range. This is the Bobbi Brown Highlighting Powder, and this one is in the shade Peach Glow. Pink Glow is my favorite highlighter in my whole collection. It's just one that looks super, super wet on the cheeks. It's just super punchy. I love this color. My only complaint is that it came out a little bit more pearlized and less peach in this particular marbleization on this pan. And I have been kind of like moving the product around to kind of get underneath to get a little bit more peach out of it but other than that it's a super wet looking highlighter it's just my favorite i did not include eyeshadows in this video because i'm probably going to do that in a separate video but there are two eye products that i do want to talk about these are the charlotte tilbury pop shots i did pick up two different shades and they're called the hypnotizing pop shots the shades that i purchased were lover's diamond and sunlit diamond i think that these were definitely on the higher price side and so i kind of debated with myself whether or not I was going to pick these up but I did when I placed the order for the cheek palette and I think these are beautiful. I have a lot of single shadows in my collection so usually what I'm looking for is does this do something that's unique that my other shadows in my palettes or my singles that I have don't do and I think these are beautiful. These are both shimmers so I know that they're probably meant to be more of lid shades but I use them all over my lid and I think they're beautiful. I think combining both of these gives really good depth and I like their lasting power so I'm a huge fan of these and I was glad that I got them. There are three mascaras to go over. So the first one is a pretty recent release. This is the mascara from Tower 28 and this is called the Make Waves Mascara. This is a tremendous mascara. Everything that I look for in a mascara is, does it give me length? Is it really pigmented? Can I build it up? And does it not look clumpy? I get that with this. I can't explain why this does such a good job. You can tell that the formulation is wet, but not overly sticky. So you do have time to go in with a second coat if you want to. I never go in with a second coat on this mascara. It's one and done every time. It's a super clean lash. It's super pigmented. It separates my lashes and never looks chunky. I mean, that's it, bottom line. Super awesome release. I think this would work for anybody and, and it doesn't matter what their personal preference is for mascara. I think that you could build it up and get more volume. And I think you get that little bit of that just on one coat anyway. So tremendous mascara. The next mascara that I have is another release from One Size. This is the Fantasize Mascara. I did just pick up a mini. This claims to be like a curling and lengthening mascara. And this was another one of One Size's releases that I was a huge fan of. I think that it's one of my few mascaras that it actually curls my lashes. I wouldn't say that it's overly pigmented, but I do think that it's lengthening. I think it's more of like a stiffer formula, like it's definitely tackier, and that's why it has that curling effect to it. So this is probably one that I'm gonna purchase the full size because I did like it so much. The last mascara that I have is a release from Simi Haze. I don't know if this mascara is necessarily a new release, but this was, but this is a brand that just recently moved into Sephora, and some of Simi Haze's products actually are new releases. I just can't remember which ones they are. I don't know what compelled me to pick up this mascara when I picked up some of the other cream blushes from their line, but I did and I was super skeptical. This is the Easy Lash Clean Lift Mascara and I'm in love with it. It's one of my favorite mascaras in my collection. I'd say that it's very, very similar to the Tower 28. It's separating. It gives me good length. It's really pigmented. I wouldn't say it's as good as the Tower 28, but it's like a close second for tubing mascaras. Okay, we are on to the final category, which is lip products. I only have one in my loves category from the lip liners and this one is from Rare Beauty. This one was from the Kind Words collection and this one is in the shade Humble. This is a matte lip liner and it has a good amount of 
of staying power. It's one of those when I swatched it, even during the video, it was it took me a little bit of struggle to kind of get it off. I think this shade is really good. It's a my lips, but better. So it's a pretty long lasting retractable lip liners and I'm a fan of retractable lip liners. I know some people aren't, but I am. And I just thought this was a really, really good release from Rare Beauty. It did come with the matte, the Kind Words matte lipsticks in the bullets. There was a whole range that came out and you will see that later in another another video. The lip liner for me was a good release. The next one that I have is from NARS. This is the Power Matte Lipstick in American Woman. NARS is a brand that I really love their lip products. I think the shade is beautiful. I think the formula is comfortable. I think the matte is like a powdery matte and it's not too stiff. I think it's something that you could easily wear on its own without having to top with gloss. And so for all of those reasons, I think this is a really good release. Okay, moving on into my bullets. This was a release from Patrick Ta. This is his lipstick in that that's why she's late. This is a matte formula, but it's a powdery matte formula. Even the bullet looks very powdery. This one does have a tendency to kind of slip through my lip lines, but I think it's a really, really creamy powdery matte formula. And I think it's ultra full coverage. And I think it lasts a super long time. I just really, really liked the texture of this. I wish that he would expand his range to come up with like more neutral colors because he launched them in pretty punchy colors, some reds and things like that. So I would like to see him expand his range for 2023 and I'm pretty picky when it comes to matte formulas so I was pleasantly surprised that I did like that particular matte formulation. This is another new release. This is from Kiko Milano. This is their Joyful Holiday Sparkling Lipstick in the shade 04 which is a burgundy shade. I don't know why but I have been on a hunt for a sparkly lip for holiday and I found a couple. This one being one of them and in a red or kind of burgundy shade. I think this is beautiful. I think that you can actually see the sparkles. I think that this is a super full coverage, very pigmented, very comfortable matte formula. Another one that stays on a really, really long time. And then the sparkles just don't hurt. So if you're looking for something that's really fun and a sparkly red holiday lip, I would go and check out Kiko Milano's new holiday releases. The next one that I have is from Give Beauty. This is her original me and original recipe. This again is a matte formula. This one stains my lips a ton more than the Patrick Ta one does. I think this is ultra pigmented. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shade of red. So if you're looking for like your true red color matte lipstick, the Give Beauty one is awesome. The next two, I don't know if they're necessarily released in 2022, but I believe they were. And if not, she definitely expanded the shade range. These ones are from About Face. These are her matte painted lip colors. I liked it so much in formulation that I started with one shade and ended up getting another one. The shades that I have for the more mauve is in Goodnight, and the one that is more pink or more peach is in Baby's Arms. When I first tried these, I thought they were a little bit dry, but I realized if you put them on, let your lips dry down for a minute, top it with a gloss, these are some that just lock under the gloss, they're beautiful and they break down nicely. When you're talking about a matte liquid lip, one of the things that I always fear is that, okay, it's gonna break apart, it's gonna start to crust up, that sort of thing. Even if you top it with a gloss, it's not gonna break down well so I usually judge my matte liquid lips by how they break down during the day and not necessarily how they apply or they sit on my lips upon first application and these ones do a really good job of breaking down evenly so I thought this was a good formulation the next one that I have is Maybelline Superstay this is the vinyl ink and I have mine in the shade 40 witty this is another one that it took me a minute to figure out if I liked it or not and this is not one that I can just leave and not top with a gloss I do have to top this one with a gloss even though it was designed to remain glossy it's not my favorite in my collection that does this but i think that it was a good formulation again one of those that breaks down nicely after you top it with a gloss i was super excited to see them expand their shade range this year haven't tried any of those but would consider picking up the other shades and testing those out I don't know if this was released this year, but I'm pretty sure that it was. This one is from NYX. This is the Smooth Whip Matte Lip Cream, and I have mine in the shade Teddy Fluff. I really like this product. I think it's very comparable to the Giorgio Armani Lip Maestro, and I think it's affor the affordable version of this, so I think it's very much a dupe for that, and I did like that formulation. I don't necessarily love this shade, but it's a really, really comfortable whipped matte formula. So if you're into that, drugstore, this was a good one. One that 
really blew me away from the drugstore this year was another one from the Oma Beauty by Sharon C, her more affordable brand. It's the It's Complicated Lip Tint Plus Oil Plus Gloss, and I have mine in the shade Miss Chief. I think that she did a really good job when she released this new collection. There were about five or six items, and I picked up three of them. And I'm gonna go back and pick up her cream blush because I loved the cream bronzer so much. But this lip stain, super full coverage, super pigmented. If you see in my cutaways, anything that happens after this and you see a stain on my hand, it's from this product. It's super staining, super vampy color. It's just glossy and comfortable. The stain isn't drying. It remains glossy for a little while. It's just a really, really good one. I think Oma Beauty did a tremendous job on these launches. So I'm gonna check out to see if they have more colors in this because I've been loving it. The next one that I have is from Givenchy. This is called the Liquid Balm and I have mine in the shade 001. Rose Perfecto. This is a plumping gloss, but it's a comfortable plumping gloss. It's a little bit more pinky than I like on an everyday basis. So I would consider picking up different shades in this to get something that complements me just a little bit more. But I think the plumping gloss is a cooling plumping and I thought this was really nice. I like having some luxury products in my collection and I think Givenchy did a good job. I know that they're coming out with a pretty similar product. I would say a dupe that is coming from Makeup Revolution and I think it already released at least in other countries and maybe not here in the US yet. But I would definitely consider checking that out because I think they are a dupe for these. But I think that these were quite unique marbleized glosses. I thought the effect was beautiful and I liked that they were plumping. The next one that I have was an Allure Best of Beauty winner. This is the Clarins Lip Oil. It's called the Lip Comfort Oil and I have mine in the shade 08 Strawberry. Right after I purchased this, this went out of stock. I think it's a good lip oil. I wouldn't say it's the best one that I've ever tried, but as far as lip oils go, I think this is glossy and pigmented. It is very comfortable. It's pretty long lasting and it has a sweet scent to it. So as far as lip oils go, that's about as much as I can say. And I did enjoy this one. I think there are other alternatives, but I was not disappointed in this formulation. The next ones that I have are from Makeup by Mario. These are the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. I have mine in the more brownie shade in Mocha Glow and the more burgundy shade in Plum Glow. These are not the shades that I wanted to get, but when these launched, they were sold out pretty quickly, so these were all the colors that I could get my hands on, but these are something else. These again are plumping, but they are the glossiest plumping lip glows I have ever tried. They're super comfortable. My only complaint with these is that the gloss fades so fast. This is one of those where I carried it around my purse and it was constantly reapplying it because it was just fading off so quickly. But the glow is just poof, it's in your face. Like it's so strong. The plumping is not irritating. It's just very, very slight. So if you want something that's so, so glossy, these are them. It's just that they don't last that long. Guys, we are on the very final product. This is a more affordable lip gloss from Essence. This was a recent launch that they had and it also came out with an eyeshadow. This one's called Pumpkin Pretty Please. It's a color changing lip oil. This one has me. This one has me 100%. It looks orange in the tube, but every time I put it on, it turns my favorite shade of mauve. It's the weirdest thing. It has an orange tint, but turns pink on the lips. I have seen some that were clear that turned, but not that were orange that turned pink. And it stays glossy, and it's more of a sticky formula. I don't know, it's just super comfortable, color changing lip oil. You guys, if you have not seen these or tried these, check this out. This is a new release that came out for like the October, November timeframe for Essence. I picked this up and the eyeshadow palette, both of them. They were 10 out of 10 for me. Okay, you guys, that is it. That was everything that I had for everything that I purchased and tried in 2022. And hopefully most of these were 2022 launches. Like I said, stay tuned if you guys wanna see my meh, and my not so good launches for 2022 because that will be coming up shortly, probably next week sometime. Leave me any comments down below of what your favorite items are or if you disagree with any of them, I'd love to hear from you. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye guys.